Welcome back to another look and review of Star Trek The Official Starships Collection. Uh, this time it's featuring issue 23, the Nebula class. Um, I apologize for not having done this sooner. I actually just received my replacement issues uh, today, uh, no I'm sorry, it was yesterday. Um, because my original shipment of the Nebula class and the Zindi ship, which I will be getting to later, came damaged which happens when you subscribe to this collection on occasion. So, um, that being said, I finally got the new replacements and uh, I thought now would be a good time to actually do this. And I thought I'd try something different and actually show my face this time instead of, you know, me having to torture you by letting you listen to my annoying voice. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's move right along. So, here's issue 23 to magazine, the Nebula class. And uh, basically, it's uh, got a wonderful image on the cover here. And uh, let's see, some basic information down in the corner. Launch 2360s, maximum speed warp 9.5, length 442 meters, uh, crew complement approximately 770. Um, now, for those of you that have gotten this issue so far, I was wondering if you, any of you noticed close up on your magazine behind the uh, shuttle bay there if you look really closely I don't think the camera is going to show it but if you look really closely there can't bend it right but if you look really closely there it looks it says the Enterprise there so maybe I guess Eagle Moss was using the rendering for the Enterprise D or I don't know but anyway so let's move on so I open it up Got some uh, more basic information about the ship and the table of contents for the magazine. Again, it's uh, Nebula class constructed. The Utopia Planitia Yards launched in the 2360s, uh, 442 meters, a crew complement of 750, a um, top speed of warp 9.6, which actually. Uh, conflicts with the front of the magazine where it says warp 9.5 just realize that um, weaponry eight type 10 phaser arrays two photon torpedo launchers and it's of course there have been several captains because there's been so many different nebula class ships seen on screen so anyway move along here another great image of the nebula class Uh, basically, uh, this part of the magazine talks about the uh, the role of the ship and uh, what its primary use was and what it did. And uh, there's an interesting little paragraph about the uh, adaptable module, which is actually this triangular portion here. Um, it's interesting to note that the Nebula class has appeared several times uh, throughout the next generation well wait maybe it was a couple of times and uh, mostly on uh, Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager and for the most part they've all had that triangular pod and only one or two have had a round pod or or something else uh, but again for the most part it's always been this triangular pod which from what everybody says and from what the magazine says it's mostly a sensor pod a sensor dome some people say it's a torpedo launcher, which I believe it does have. Other people say it's something else. I mean, it just it kind of differs, but basically it's just that extra pod, um, which is cool, by the way. But anyway, basically the Nebula class was designed and constructed in the 24th century around the same time as the larger Galaxy class. As a result, they shared similar technology and components. In particular, the Nebula class had a saucer section that was almost identical in design and size to that found on a Galaxy class. Um, pretty much the Nebula class is basically the Reliant, or basically the Miranda class of the 24th century in a strange way because it has the nacelles down at the bottom, uh, some kind of roll bar or a sensor pod on the top, and the same saucer. Um, as the Galaxy class. So basically if you take all the pieces from the Nebula class and, and rearrange them in a certain way you would have the Galaxy class. 
which is kind of cool, which is, I guess, saved the producers a lot of money at the time when they were making the model for the show. So turning the page here, we got some more great images of the various Nebula classes that have appeared on screen. We've got First Contact, the Battle of Sector 001. You've got the uh, scene from uh, The Wounded, which is the USS Phoenix. And down below that, you have the uh, Starship Barrogate from Star Trek Generations, which was uh, later destroyed in Deep Space Nine. I think in the fourth season. You didn't see it destroyed, but it was referred to in dialogue as having been destroyed by the Klingons. And uh, down here on the bottom right, bottom uh, left corner, if I can get the camera to be nice to me again, uh, is the uh, Captain Benjamin, Ma Benjamin Maxwell, none other than the Warden from uh, Shawshank Redemption. Which I think is kind of cool, uh, and even even then he played this kind of asshole captain who was a uh, very much thought he was right, just like the warden did. I guess the actor has played these kinds of roles a lot. So, and here we have a beautiful little schematics type page of the Nebula class. Um, interestingly enough, this magazine. On the cover of the uh, magazine, on the hull of the ship, it says USS Honshu, registry number NCC60205, and same with the model. But, as far as I know, there's no mention of a USS Honshu anywhere in the magazine. It mentions the Sutherland, it mentions the Phoenix, it mentions the Prometheus, it mentions other Nebula classes, but it has not mentioned a USS Honshu. I don't know why they, they chose that, um, considering that the Sutherland is the most popular. Um, the Honshu, now this is probably a shame on my part, but I don't remember which version of the Nebula class was actually called the Honshu. Was it one of them in the Battle of War 359? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, so yeah, we have that beautiful page here showing you where the components are, the deflector's dish, the captain's yacht, the engineering hull, and so on and so forth. And the section about the designing of the Nebula class uh, with some great screenshots here from uh, Star Trek Generations, Best of Both Worlds, and uh, Phoenix down here on the corner there. Got some concept art and renderings here with some up close photographs of the uh, actual studio filming model, which is really cool. And another great, awesome CGI rendering here. And a screen cap from Voyager with the uh, Prometheus, which is not to be confused with the uh, uh, Nebula class, is actually another Prometheus, which is from the Voyager episode messes in a bottle but we'll get to that later on when that ship comes in um, so here's that image which I think is really cool that makes a great poster or would make a great poster and a section on the introducing and the designing of the Cardassians now I have never really been a fan of the Cardassians I uh you know I guess they kinda grew on me as I watched DS9 growing up but I really kinda just didn't like them I thought they were more like the dinosaurs of the next generation um, but they later you know they later got more formidable and they became characters which I got to I grew to like but initially I just they just didn't really do much for me but anyway and talks about the various appearances the nebula class has appeared in um, it's been on Next Generation and the Wounded. It's been in, on DS9, Voyager. It's been in Star Trek Generations, First Contact. And uh, mostly in Deep Space Nine, during the Dominion War, uh, you've seen quite a few of them in the battle and in the various fleets that we've seen. Um, I don't think we've seen one destroyed on the show. Actually, that's not true. Um, there was a... Nebula class that Captain Sisko 
was traveling on with a with Gold Ducat, who was in prison on the ship, um, and they were attacked by a, I guess a Dominion fighter fighter squadron or something, and the ship was destroyed, and Cisco and Ducat were forced to abandon ship and crash landed on a planet in an escape pod. So, in fact, I think that might actually be the Honshu. Hmm, I think I finally figured it out. Um, so anyway, the next one coming up, which I also have here, is the uh, Zindi Insectoid ship, but I'll take a look at that later. And great cover image on the back of the ship. And uh, so yeah, now onto the model itself. Here it is, the Nebula class. USS Honshu. Got that metal in the saucer section. A lot of nice detail there. Especially in the deflector dish area. Can you see it? Can you see it? No, I can. Um, got the sensor pod there. Got the warp nacelles, including the uh, illuminating grills there. Or field grills. Um, disappointingly though, this model does not have any shuttle bay or anything in the back there, it's just kind of plain. Um, I wish they had done that a little bit better, but you know, for the quality that this model is, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I think this looks great. Um, aside from the fact that my first one came damaged, I think that was my only frustration with it. Um, so it kind of took the joy out of it for a while, but once I got over that, it kind of I really learned to like this model. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with this. I'm glad it's been included in the collection. Um, this is one of those ships that have never been made in model form before. I know there have been maybe, uh, uh, you know, custom kits built. And uh, I know there, the Micro Machines line from years ago actually did one. But that doesn't really count as a model, does it? Um, but this is the first time there's actually a die-cast type model of a Nebula-class ship, which is really cool. So thanks, Eagle Moss, for including it. Um, so yeah, I think this is really cool. It looks great. There's your close-up of the underside there with the registry number, deflector dish, warp nacelles. Got the, the top of the primary saucers section and the uh, sensor pod there nice little font for the uh, registry number and the name of the ship come on camera work with me here there we go there we go so yeah so that's the nebula class as usual they come with their customary stand and plastic thing to go in now the stand was a little bit wonky you know, it took a little bit to get the ship in there and more importantly for it to stay there. Um, let's see if I can get it right the first time. Again. And I did not get it right. So, now, there it is. The ship on its stand. Gotta be real careful with this one. For some reason, the weight maybe because it's all in the saucer of this thing that it it fell that it the, the weight just causes it to kind of fall so oh well once I get it back on the shelf where it was um, it'll probably stay there that is if we don't have an earthquake anytime soon hopefully um, so yeah that's the nebula class next I'll be taking a look at the uh, Zindi insectoid ship which I was really looking forward to getting that one. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for listening and watching, and I appreciate anything that you could say below. And I'm sorry this is so amateur, but hey, we'll all work with what we got. So thanks so much, and I'll catch you all later.